in the standard coordinate plane, what is the slope of a line parallel to the given equation? So I'm going to box in the word slope and underline the word parallel. I know that I want to rewrite this in the form y equals mx plus b, but I want to achieve this answer in the least amount of time. So all I'm really concerned about is the slope. If two lines are parallel, visually we know if they're parallel, they run kind of side by side, they'll never ever intersect. If you just look at equations, if two lines are parallel, they'll have the same slope. So how can I figure this out? Well, I'm going to take what I'm given and I'm going to take the 9 and move it to the opposite side. So I have negative 27y equals negative 9x plus 3. I'm doing the least amount of work to get the answer. Now to isolate the y, I divide by negative 27. Now I'm only caring about this portion. Yes, 27 has to be shared with 3, but I want to do the least amount of work. So this has to be shared with both sides. I have negative 9 over negative 27. What is to reduce to? Two negatives make a positive. Anything that's not a positive, I cancel out. This reduces to 1 third. Which of the following equations will have a vertical line as a graph? So I'm just going to do a little graph here. If it has a vertical line, it looks something like this. Now vertical lines, vertical lines are always going to cross through the x-axis. So it's going to be x equals some number. Review to number two. A vertical line will always be x equals some number. A horizontal line will always be y equals some number. Number three. Now this was a tricky one. If P plus Q equals R and P plus R equals 2Q, then what is the ratio of Here is what I'm going to do. I want you to circle this. I know my final answer wants it in the order of P, whoops, sorry, not an R, of P to R. My final answer needs P on the left and R on the right because that's how it's given to us. So does it say anything about Q over here? So there's nothing about Q's. So I want to find a way to eliminate the Q's. So I start with the first equation that I'm given. And now to eliminate the Q's, let's, let's isolate the Q's. So I'm going to move P to the opposite side. Q equals R minus P. Then I have the second equation here. And I'm going to start writing out P plus R equals 2. Okay, I'm not going to put in a Q. I'm going to put what Q is equivalent to, R minus P. And I'll distribute it, and I have P plus R equals 2R minus 2P. Now, I want to write this in a way that has P on the left and R on the right. So I'm going to move the P's to the left. So I have three P's over here. And I'm going to move this R to the right. It becomes a negative R. 2R minus 1R equals 1R. So what is the ratio of P to R? There's three P's on the left, one R on the right. This particular problem uses two key terms that are going to allow us to get this answer right. First, please circle the word prime. So one is you have to understand what does it mean to be prime. And two, you have to understand what it does it mean to be between things. <coughs> so prime numbers, the only way to achieve a prime, excuse me, <coughs> the only way to achieve a prime number is taking that number times 1. 1 is not prime, by the way. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example here. So how do I get 3? Well, the only way is 1 times 3. It's prime. But 4 is not prime because I could achieve 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. Like 5 is prime because it's 1 times 5. So in doing so, you're going to see that every even number, except for 2, every even number cannot be prime because 6 is 2 times 3 or 1 times 6, right? You can only have one combination one times itself. And so, <coughs> for that reason, when we think of even numbers other than 2, because 2 is 1 times 2, when we think of even numbers, we know evens will never, ever be prime. So how many prime numbers? It can never be an even number. And it's between 45 and 72. So I'm writing down 45, I'm writing down 72. And I'm going in between here. When we hear the word between, between means we are not going to include the endpoint. So it's between these two. So it's like from here to here. I can include 45 and I cannot include 72. So I'm, going, okay, I'm not going to consider 46 because it's even. So I'm going to do this quick. I have 47, 48, 49, 51. And as I go, I'm going to circle any one that I know the only way to achieve the number, the only way to achieve the number is taking one times itself. So here's 65, here's 67, 69, 
and 71. Okay, so I grabbed that calculator. If you're not great with coming up with the different factors, I know the only way you would get 47 is 1 times 47. Boom, it works. I'm making a little note here. 49, oh, 7 times 7, so that's not prime. 51, I'm going to divide it by 3 because I believe, yep, okay. 51 can also be achieved by taking 3 times 47, that's not prime. 53 I know is prime. 55 is a multiple of 5, see how if I divide by 5, 11 times uh, 5 is 51, that doesn't work. I believe 57 is prime, oh, it's not, see how I took it divided by 3? Three? 3 times 19 is 57, it's not prime. 59 I know is prime. 61, I don't remember, so I'm just going to try a few. Oh, doesn't work there. Let's try 7. doesn't work there. I think 61 is prime. I think 61 is prime. Let's try a few. I think 61 is prime, okay? 63, I, I can take 7 times 9. That doesn't work. I know this is divisible by 5. doesn't work. Oh, I believe 57. Does 57 divide by 3? No. Does 57 divide? We know it doesn't divide by an even. Let's try 7. No, 57 divided by... Well, if 3 doesn't work, we know 9 is not going to work. And so we're going to see, oh, that 67, excuse me, is also prime. 69, I know, is not prime because I can divide it by 3. And 71, let's check 71. Is 71 divisible by anything that you guys are aware of? Nope, so 71 is also prime. So how many primes do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I'm miscounting the number of circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Not good that I'm teaching you math and I can't. So x is anti integer. It can be positive or negative. Remember, integers are like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. They're not decimals like 3.5. All right? And so we have anti integer, any integer this will work for, in which of the following gives you an odd number. So I'm going to choose one of these and I'm going to input and see if I get an odd. So let's start with 1. Very simple. So if I plug in 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Well, that's not odd. Cancel it out. Plug in 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. That could work. 2 times 1 is 3. That could work. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Oh, 4 is even. And 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so I have a 50% chance of getting it right. So I just tried an odd number, like I'm going to switch over here and try an even number that's negative. Like I'm going to try negative 2 and just try. So negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3 and then 3 times negative 2. Okay, let's try. So this gives us negative 4 and negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Still an odd number. That would work. The next one is 3 times my negative 2 option. That's negative 6. That's an even number. Correct answer. Says we're working at the a general coordinate plane in which the equation is perpendicular to the following line and it passes through the given point. If things are perpendicular, it means that their slopes are negative inverses. I want to show you a quick example of what this would look like. I'm making this up. So if I had 3 over 1x plus 5, I'm making this up, and I had to create one that was perpendicular, I flip it around and I change the sign. Flip it around, change the sign. That's what we're looking for, okay? So I'm going to start by being able to identify which ones have inverses, excuse me, which ones have negative um, reciprocals. So let's look here. Let's get y by itself. First I move the 9 to the opposite side. I have negative 27y equals negative 9. Let's move over plus 3. Then I divide by negative 27. Remember that 27, it's negative, has to be shared with both. Negative 9 over negative 27, x plus 3 over negative 27. I'm reducing this to get one third x plus oh, negative one ninth. This is the key. If I said to you, what is the negative reciprocal? It means you're going to flip it around and change the sign. So my next equation is going to have a slope of not only three over one, it's going to be the opposite sign, negative three over one x. Okay? Is there anything I can do here? So I'm going to go through here. And I want to find out what can I cancel out. Which ones do not have a slope of negative 3? When this moves over to the other side, so it's in the form y equals mx plus b, what would be the slope? When this moves to the opposite side to put it in this form, what would be the slope? Positive 3x. I want a negative 3x. When this moves over, what would be the slope? Could be it. Is this the correct slope? Nope. When this moves over, what would be the slope? Negative 1 third. Nope. Okay, now this is trickier. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to put this in for x and this in for y. This in for x, this in for y. 
So 2 goes in for x, and negative 2 goes in for y. So I have negative 2 equals negative 6 plus b. I add 6 over, and I end up with 4 equals b. And how does that help me? So I want y equals negative 3x plus 4. Notice here when I rewrite this, and this goes to the other side. I have y equals negative 3x plus 4. That's my If a number is divisible by 13, so I want to write that out. We have a number, and you can divide it by 13. So if it's divisible by 13, then it is also divisible by which of the following numbers? If this number can be divided by 13, divided by 13. So let's just take 13 times some number. Please do it with me. Let's take 13 times some number. So 13, let's say it doesn't matter what number it is. Like 13 times 4, for instance. 13 times 4. So I'm going to write down 104. 104 divided by 13. And I'm going to show you how we know it's divisible. Because we end up when we divide with a nice, with a nice um, whole number. So I'm going to take this 104 and I'm just going to check the other ones. 104 divided by 3. Doesn't work. 104 divided by 6. Doesn't work. 104 divided by 7. Doesn't work. 104 divided by 11. Doesn't work. Now, could you have been like, I don't want to take it times 4. Can I take 13 times 2? The exact same thing would happen. We could try 26 divided by each of these and none of it works. We could take 13 times 3 and do the same thing with 39. Okay? All of those. 8, which of the following is closest to the square root of, of 3 fifths? So I'm just going to take this. Which one is closest to the square root? To get the square root, you're going to hit the blue key. Go straight down until you find the x squared. You have this. Fifth and 3 divided by 5 and get an answer. So 0.77. I want to know which one is closest to 0 0.774, okay? And I'm literally just going to use my calculator and I'm going to go quick. 1, one divided by 2. Nope. Okay, this is 0.5. 2 divided by 3. Okay, 0.66. 3 divided by 4. I think this one may be at 0.75. 4 divided by 5, 0.8. And you're going to see with the ACT that when they give you a list of numbers, they're going to be either going up or going down consistently. To listen to that real quickly. They're either going to be going up or going down. It's not going to be random like 0.5, then 0.8, then 1.0, then 0.6. So which one is closest to this? Correct answer is H.